Extreme Collectibles here with day seven of 10 days of statues. I can see the finish line, and then I'm gonna take a day off and start over again. Not, not uh, do 10 days again, but I'll go back to every other day. So uh, it is a little exhausting. It's time, baby. You know what time it is? Extreme Collectibles here with Prime One, one third scale, Batman XE Arkham Origins exclusive. Whew. That's a lot. And if you guys are kind of wondering about this piece at all or why I got it, well, I did a review on Prime One Freeze. You remember that? Here's a picture. And I said I think this is the best licensed piece I've ever seen. I might still stand by that. With that being said, I decided to pull the trigger on him, especially with the cheap shipping I got. So Prime One uh, made 1,300 of these. 800 were the collector's edition and 500 were the exclusive. The collector's edition and the exclusive all come with this portrait. However, the exclusive edition comes with an additional portrait that looks like this. And originally with pictures, I thought this was not an exclusive or fail, meaning you have to get it because the exclusive portrait makes it. I thought it's quite the opposite. I thought the regular portrait is much, much better. However, the collector's portrait, which we're gonna do, uh, uh, or the exclusive portrait, which we're gonna do uh, close-ups on both, is amazing. It is really, really good. I probably will still display this one, which we'll talk about for reasons later. But putting this with my Prime One one third line, I have most of Prime One's one third DC pieces, so many Batmans. Uh, of the six or seven pieces I got from Prime One this week, I think three are Batmans. But I wanted to open him first, really excited about him. They uh, retailed the exclusive at $12.50 and the regular at $11.99. So that's $1,249.99, a little bit cheaper, a penny cheaper. So lots of different pieces to this guy. Here's a picture of the two layers of foam that he came in. You can also see the art box right here. As you guys know, I'm not a big fan of art boxes. And then here's a picture uh, on this table before I assembled everything. I was gonna assemble it on camera, but I'm glad I didn't because I would have had to stand up. And you're welcome for all of you that saw my room tour, which is probably most of you. Uh, I started filming without pants and then I recognized the reflection, so I had to go put some on. Well, I didn't have to, so who knows? Depending how many subscribers I get, we could start doing like strip poker or something, depending on number of subscribers. So uh, yeah, very, very cool piece. As you can see, he's monstrous. Let's get some dimensions on him. Wide with the ice shard coming out here is probably about 23 inches. Depth is 19 and height is just over 31. For exact dimensions, please visit Prime One or Sideshow's website. And the big disadvantage to him is how much space he takes up, which we will talk about when we get to concept and design. But I purchased him right after I received Prime One Freeze, who I thought was overpriced until I received it. And you guys have seen that review, well, some of you have. And needless to say, for this guy, I had... And to be honest with you, it met expectations. It's really, really cool. So let's jump into the concept and design and kind of talk about what's going on. So first, you'll notice when we get to paint and sculpt, when I talk about the base, it's a lot of the same uh, as it was with Mr. Freeze. They kind of move stuff around, but all the awesome, awesome qualities of the base with Mr. Freeze are on here. So he is in Mr. Freeze's lair, his hideout, hence this huge snowy, icy base that's generating you know, s s uh, snow and ice and chill in the air. And Batman is in his XC suit. This is his anti-freeze suit, whether he has snowshoes or insulation. And there's even these orange uh, coils uh, keeping him warm throughout the entire thing. And he's just body armored it up all the way to the top. And he's lurching along 
almost like he's coming straight at Mr. Freeze. I would have loved to put Mr. Freeze right next to him, but I honestly don't know if this table could uh, handle both of them. The, uh, the amount of weight on this guy is unbelievable. So, uh, so design-wise, very, very clever how they did this. A few different things going on. So first of all, the base is, again, very similar to Mr. Freeze. Nothing really, really crazy or unique or anything like that. Um, apart from Mr. Freeze, let me say that. Well, I already kind of hinted at the fact that the base is way too big. He takes up way too much room. It's almost as much room as two Prime 1 statues, so that's kind of unfortunate. But uh, he is lurching forward, so that makes sense. As far as going together, the three ice shards are a different piece. The uh, gate is two different pieces. On Batman, on his snow cleats, the spikes, on uh, the six spikes on each foot are all separate pieces. You probably saw those. His wrist blades go in. His arms are separate pieces. His shoulder blades, his collar, and then uh, these metal parts of his uh, suit right here, and of course his portraits. One of the things you see, there's no cape here. He does come with a cape. So here's a few pictures of the cape. I'm not gonna display him with the cape because I have plenty of cape Batmans, and to me he looks good without it. And this kind of covers up the base, which is part of the star of the show on this. You know, one cool thing about the cape here is they did put ice uh, snow melt on the bottom of it, as you see. So I like him better without the cape, so that's the way we're gonna go. But everything fit really well. Props to Prime 1. I didn't even need to look at the directions, uh, even though I was tempted because it was right there, but directions are for... But yeah, so great concept, great design. I almost think that this can't be a standalone piece. It has to be a, a piece with Mr. Freeze, unless you just collect Batman statues. And to me, it's almost a piece you have to get if you, get, you have Mr. Freeze, but it's kind of hard at the price point. But let's talk about the paint and sculpt, which is what makes this statue so good. If you really want to know a lot about the base, we're going to show some close-ups and stuff like that, but I'm not going to get really in-depth because it is so similar to Mr. Freeze. It's just in different places, and for sake of keeping this review shorter. But starting here, the snow effect is just awesome. Just like Mr. Freeze, this is the best licensed snow effect I've seen. I hope everyone does snow effects like this in the future. Again, another great snow effect, like I said in my last review, is ARP uh, Logan diorama with Hulk. One unique thing here is they did put the Batman symbol on the side here. So it's traditionally on the back or the uh, front, it's on the side, which is interesting, but it looks good. And here's some close-ups of the shards. Again, just like Mr. Freeze, they don't have as many here, but that clear transparent resin. And then even the uh, poles and railing in the back has the snow dripping off. And then finally, just some of the pipes that have frozen over that are generating that cold, and they have the snow effect all over them. Super, super cool. I absolutely love it. Um, then Batman, just like Mr. Freeze, he's freaking awesome. He, they did a really, really good job, and so let's just dive right in, starting at his shoes. So first of all, again, the snow effect, and the snow effect kind of stops at his shoes, which is interesting. So he hasn't fought Mr. Freeze yet, otherwise it would have splashed up farther. But he has these, you know, camo style, not camo, but rugged style boots with these spikes. And the spikes are digging into the ground where he's pressing forward. Just really padded up shoes. And I like the color, it's grays and blacks to kind of differentiate it. And then he has the armor both on the front and back of his legs. Those armor plates part of his XE suit, and then he has these straps that look like mixed media, but they're sculpted in, these black straps in between. And then you see kind of the insulated clothing he's wearing beneath his knee pads, kind of another off color, and you'll see this in his crotch and, and partly on his arms and his chest. And then he has these metallic braces that I assume are to help uh, keep the suit cold. And notice on his knees, at first I thought these orange reddish things were just really cool uh, designs, but I think they're actually kind of like heat, co uh, heat coils to keep him warm. Then moving up a few tears in even a thicker insulation he has on his back and there's these straps holding it in. Then his crotch isn't as big as I would think for Batman, but he has a zipper there because just in case, you know, probably needs easy access. 
And then on the back, you can see his ass. And there's this big fold that could be kind of a uh, uh, maybe zip or two for easy access to take a dump without taking all this stuff off. Who knows? Awesome, awesome utility belt. Not your traditional Batman utility belt. More like a, a army belt with these awesome sculpted pouches. And almost looks like a few grenades and a huge belt clip in the middle with some uh, slashes in it. And then what's really interesting to me is he has this, I don't know why they did this, it looks really good, but his uh, outerwear armored uh, insulation has a six pack. So obviously that couldn't be his, his actual six pack, but they created it like a six pack. And it looks really good, even though conceptually it's kind of dumb. And then you see a ton of those heat coils right up here, all over, which makes sense. They'd want his chest to stay warm. His bat uh, symbol looks awesome with a few scratches on it and the armor uh, plates around it. Then checking out his arms, again, a ton of heat coils, which again, lo logically makes sense and almost like some powered engines in that same orange color that's generating the heat. And he has both armor and insulation all the way throughout with the same black and gray and almost a greenish color on some of that insulate, outer insulation he's wearing. And then his gloves, again, have the uh, heat coils all over so he can use his fists. Spikes look good on his, uh, his bat spikes. Then his shoulder blades, again, very similar to all the rest of the armor, but it really adds to it. I'm glad they went with the shoulder blades. You can't display it without because there's a big empty key, but it just makes him look more buff. And then his collar that's meant to uh, hold his cape in, he even looks good without his cape on it. And then starting at his uh, exclusive portrait, so here he doesn't have a mask over his uh, face, but it is still a uh, cold suit helmet because around the jawline, you kind of see the mechanics of the, uh, I don't even know what I'm saying here. You know, you can tell, you know what I'm saying. I don't even need to say it. I should do silent reviews for now, but just look at this face. Awesome, awesome sculpt. I want to see if this head's going to fit on any one-third other Batmans because it's so good. The flesh tones and the sculpt and the stubble and the pink lips. And a few gashes on his head too. So he's definitely been in a fight on this one. But fabulous job on this. And same thing can be said. It's the, almost the same expression and sculpt on the one where he has the mouth plate. The mouth plate looks badass too. A few uh, rips on that, but just this black, black color. Kind of reminds me of the uh, black head on a XM Bat Samurai. And I'm going to display it with this helmet, be, or this portrait, simply for the fact that it's more uh, to the storyline, even though I think I may like that one better. But uh, like I said, I'll see if the other one can... It's sitting over here, by the way. I'll see if uh, this one can uh, uh, fit on another Batman. So those are my thoughts on this piece. Awesome, awesome piece. I'm not looking forward to getting them into the display. First, I'm going to have to move a shitload around and then carry them. And I think I'm going to have to take them apart because he's so fucking heavy. Oop, can I say that on YouTube? I just said it. So uh, thanks for watching, guys. Let me know what you think of this piece. And again, what is your favorite one-third Batman piece to date? Not Batman villain, but actual Batman piece. If you haven't subscribed, go ahead and subscribe. And thanks again, really appreciate it.